just got back from a long record haul and I've got a small fortune in vintage vinyl. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about vintage vinyl. I just got back with a very big haul of LP records. Now, this was a haul I didn't want to do. I wasn't planning on driving there. I was talked into it by the quantity and some of the photos that they sent me. I ended up spending pretty much the night looking through these hours. And I sorted through and picked just the ones I want, which was an option I usually don't get. So I've got some very good records for almost nothing. I've got a dollar a piece into them at quantity, though I had to buy quantity to get them that cheap. Now this is from somebody who buys out estates. This is an entire estate I got to go through, an entire room of just vinyl, just a huge amount of vinyl. So without further ado, let's dig through some of these vinyls here. Now this is Diamond. This is a oddball 70s-ish um, semi-rock southern kind of thing. It's a white label promo actually which I did uh, check out meaning that it was made for radio stations and stuff like that. Now most all of these were mint. I didn't mess with any that weren't. Um, again I had choice so I picked through all the good ones here. Now there's some old ones in there too. This person, whoever these came from, had a ton of various ones. There's an inner lining. This is an original son, Jerry Lee Lewis. Again, a dollar a piece for these. I may, uh, in the very near future, do some bulk lots or wholesale just to blow some out because I've got a massive quantity. Again, I, I wasn't planning on buying anything. I don't need anything. It was just such a good deal I couldn't turn it down. A few records out of the collection might get me all of my money. Now, I just picked some random ones off the very first uh, box that we got. I do very well with Elvis. Um, you can see it's in excellent condition here. I can't pass this up, you know, especially when it's like his first LPs, the first few. You got to grab these up for that kind of price. This one's going to get me some decent money. More Elvis. This is a double set. It has the liners, the whole works. You can't knock it, honestly. I mean, the, the records were just immaculate. Normally, I wouldn't just buy this sort of thing. Vintage LPs aren't as hot as they used to be. I do far better with um, 45s and 78s for the most part. Now, this one has a sticker on it, and I'm going to have to look this one up. This may have been like a add-on. It says it's got a photo inside. No, I didn't even look if it had the photo. Some of these would have had books. No photo there. Yeah, there's no photo in this one. So it's missing the photo, but it has a sticker. So still an excellent one here. This one's got Suspicious Minds. Very good song by him. If you don't know that one, you should probably check it out. Spin out. I always buy these. Clam Bakes, one of the ones I always look for. And in fact, this has something in it. Is it the original? Yep, yep, look at that. There you go. Original Elvis poster in the Spin Out LP. Uh, I can't do much better than that. It has the original Inside Elvis liner, too. Again, these look like they're untouched. So, you know, something like this in NM minus condition with the poster and all is going to be worth a few bucks. Yeah, I didn't spend the time to look and see inside of everyone. I don't pay attention to that when I'm out buying like this. For the dollar, even if I threw these up together in a lot, um, I'm going to get my money back out of these without a doubt. Still has the cello. There's Roust about. Um, there's probably another dozen or so Elvis that I did get as well. Now here's one I do fondly uh, remember. I don't like live very much, so I wasn't as fond of this. But the group itself brings back some good memories. That's what a concert was when I used to go to concerts. A big open air totally filled with smoke and stuff um just a bunch of people with long hair jamming out to something back in the day this is an original how do you tell if it's an original there's no uh barcode on the back and on this one here it should be the blue casablanca instead of the beige sand colored one with a different look on the label it has silver text on it too so that is the first edition first pressing on this one if you didn't know decent record i want to say i got like 30 bucks out of the last one we sold again discs are near mint now i grew up on rudolph the red nosed ranger this is the video craft tv one with burl ives these are the little puppet ones that you see as a kid 
I've had a couple of these. They always sell. Now, this one will probably hit top dollar around Christmas time. I still list them up now, and I list them at full price, just what I would expect to get for them at Christmas, and I'm done with it. I don't so much wait on certain items like this. Um, it's an excellent condition here. I'm not going to find a better copy of this. Again, these do very well, all these TV soundtracks, because they're rare. They don't show up very often. Wish Nick. Now, I've had these, and I buy these every time I get them, only because it has the trolls on the cover. Um, they do very well, honestly, and I'm really surprised I found another one of these. I have a couple of these in stock right now. There's five or six different albums like this. Now, I'm not shouting out prices on every one of these. I'm just trying to show you what's the good ones to get. Now, any of these early Hanna-Barbera ones I do very well with. Um, you know, it's got a coloring page, coloring book inside, lots of Flintstones, Yogi Bear, the whole works. Now, I grew up watching all these shows. I know every one of these that you could possibly imagine. I actually am working on a video uh, to ID every one of the Hanna-Barbera characters for you. So, anyway, excellent one here, just a nice copy. Now, I've probably shown you half a dozen of these exact same ones over the past two or three years we've been on here. I do extremely well with all of these. This is, um, I think, Powerhouse. Yeah, Power is the one that does most of these. Yeah, there it is. Look for that Power logo. This is an original, 75, year before the motion picture came out. It was still very popular. The cartoon series, I think, was from like 73, maybe, somewhere in that range. So they were still able to play off Star Trek. I have fond memories of these, uh, the artwork and such worth from these. I grew up on Star Trek, so anyway, these always do very, very well. Ten bucks, fifteen bucks, they'll be a quick mover. Um, I guess soundtracks are the next one here. Hurry Sundown. Now, I do fairly decent on soundtracks. This is an oddball one. Um, it's an original RCA stereo, the whole works. I'm going to have to look this one up. I don't honestly remember if this one's worth much at all. I'll take a shot on soundtracks, especially with all the other ones I'm getting. Now, here's a one with uh, good, fond memories. Me and my wife were dating when this came out, before we were married. So, And this is sealed. Now, for those in Patreon, it's cut here. You should know what that means. I've talked about that before for those in Patreon. It's got the poly on it, though. In the markdown section of the record store this sold at, it sold for a quarter. Guarantee I'll get some decent money from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The original, let's see what the year is on this, 1988. Again, I remember when this came out. I had just met my wife. Now, I've talked about soundtracks. I like getting soundtracks of movies I grew up watching with my dad and stuff. So this is one of those examples here. It still has the cellophane on it, as you can see. Dirty Dozen, another one of those war movies. Um, you can't beat it. And in fact, this is a special disc jockey record, not for sale. I don't know how well you can see that. Let's get it so you can see it. I've never seen this one with that uh, LP version of it. Kind of surprised. I didn't look inside all these, as I said. Um, Fantasia, I always do very well with this version or even the original Disneyland record version of Fantasia. I want to say I got 15 or 20 bucks on the low end in just okay condition VG+. Plus. This looks like NM minus, so this one I might get 25 or 30 on a good day. Now, I know a lot of people say, you know, you don't get that for these records. Well, it depends on where you sell the records. It depends on other factors. I put them up high. I let them float. I don't worry about it. It's passive income for most of this sort. I, again, we sell on Discogs, Amazon, and eBay records. So it's not just what we're going to sell on eBay or Discogs. I do roll these out on Amazon as well. Now, I buy these in multiples. I've shown this one before. The Main Street Electrical Light Parade, they retired it while I worked there, and they gave out posters, which I get. And These still do very well because they do not run the parade anymore. Now, I used to get 40 bucks for these. I want to say they're down to like 30, 29 to 30 range is what we get for them. I'll buy multiple copies of anything. In fact, there's probably a few more of those in here. Now, Alice in Wonderland, another good one. This is the original uh, Disneyland version, Disneyland Records. These do very well also. Now, here's Easy Rider. Most people should at least know this one. Um, it's a classic. I'm not sure on value on this one at all. So, worst case scenario, I get three to five bucks for some of these. I dump them in a lot. Or maybe I will sell some out wholesale for those who are interested in messing with uh, little cheaper records. Um, again, I remember this when it came out. They had gum cards to it, trade cards, the whole works. 
In fact, this is... Uh, this is actually a foreign version. I didn't even look at that. Made in France. So this, yep, and in fact, it's right there. This is a French version of the Bee Gees. It looks like the original one, honestly. I will have to look this up, but I bet you it's probably worth about 30 or 40 bucks. Just guesstimating here. Now, TV series, I always look for anything from a TV show usually does well. Hawaiian Eye, and this is Connie Stevens. She plays Cricket in this. Now, I vaguely remember the name. I don't think I've ever seen it. Hawaii Five-O, different story there for sure. Now, here's another one that I run into fairly often. Now, unfortunately, this was with a cassette and a book. The cassette's gone. So I still buy it because the book still gets me about six, eight bucks on any given day. Or I put it together with other uh, Star Wars. You know, they do okay like that. But that's about it. I really like to find it with the tape attached to it and sell it that way. Sesame Street. Yeah, I do okay with these. It's a gatefold. It's an original. Uh, nice, decent graphics on it. Original press. The original Sesame Street label as well. So... You know, they're not worth a fortune. It's from 75. It's a gatefold. It's original. It's a Christmas one. So something like this, 15, 20 bucks about what I would get out of it. Another uh, war movie one where Eagle's there. Clint Eastwood's in this one. I know this one very well. I've seen it many times. Uh, Richard Burton. Um, there's quite a few other famous people in here too. But anyway, another one of the soundtracks, which I do fondly remember. Rufus Thomas. Now, you got to know something about musicians to begin with. Stax is one of those labels that's got a lot of good classic soul like this. This is on my classics list. I would say pretty much anything by Rufus Thomas for sure. Um, I nab this stuff up whenever I can see it. It's in excellent condition if you can see. Mod, great cover, nice, nice graphics, movement. It's a really nice one, honestly. Now, G Knight, Mr. Big Stuff. You should know that song. It's another Stax. I probably picked up about 150 different stack labels. This person collected several different genres, so I got some good jazz in there, and there's a few in here I'll show you too. But Now this is, again, for those in Patreon, there's a cut on this, and they just cut the corner off. Again, you should know what that means then. I still mess with these. This will do very, very, very well. It's not worth a fortune, but it's an excellent cover, nice graphics, the whole works. Now, vintage 50s and early 60s usually do fairly well, especially when they're on, like, um, a specialty label or something. And as you can see here, it's an original roulette. This is the 50s version, 58 or somewhere in that range. The Playmates, this one should do okay, 15 or so bucks. Prints, I have a habit. I usually pick up prints. I'll throw these all in a lot with the ones that don't sell very well. It's an original... A lot of these aren't worth a fortune, so this usually goes in a big lot. And I have tons of prints, so I can sell 20 prints LPs for a decent price. You get good money that way. I don't have to picture each one. It cuts down my list time and the whole works. So, The Times, again, more soul. This is a Parkway. This is Chubby Checker's label, if you know anything about your, your records. Excellent condition, almost mint on the cover. The record looks NM, NM minus, somewhere in that range. This should do very, very, very well. Um, again, I listen to most of these, too. I could pretty much tell you almost any song on most of these records, other than maybe the Sesame Street one there, too. The Whispers, another nice soul. This is on the Soul Train label. Now, this one has the push sticker, one for the money. The push sticker is incredibly hard to find. This is what they pushed or advertised when the record was new. It's still in the cellophane. So this sticker could double the value, just having a sticker like that. Now, if this was like an Elvis or U2 or something that's really sought after, a push sticker can add a ton, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, even if it's open. So anyway... Now we've got Nina Simone. Now my favorite by her is Save Me. That's one of my favorites by her. Type it in, look up it on YouTube, and you'll hear it. There's tons of versions of it, but Save Me is one of my favorites by her. Now the Village Gate is a well-known jazz um, venue. It was a, it, it's a place. It's a, like a club, I guess you could say. So this is her performing. Now this is on a Cool Picks, Columbia Pictures. Is that's what that stands for? And is this? This almost looks like it's some sort of promo with the label, but I don't think so. This is just an original early press, I, I do believe. I may have to look this one up. But these do extremely well, these early Nina Simone. Her on Bethlehem or something along that line label do extremely well also. 
Now here's a Blue Note. Blue Note's like one of the best jazz labels you can get. Nice original. Now, to tell if it's an original, you go by the address on the label. That's usually how you can tell if it's an original or a second pressing. Jimmy Smith is very well collected. Um, it's more like a mod, almost like a freak out jazz in my book. Excellent, good soul style of jazz. So I usually pick up these. Now, every one isn't worth a fortune. So again, I can put these in lots as well, which I probably will do. I've probably got about a dozen or two of just Jimmy Smith in there too. Stan Getz. Now, Stan Getz is another one of those. This one is on Roost, Royal Roost. It'll say Roost on the outside of the record. Um, yeah, Roost right there. Royal Roost is a well-known one. There's even 45s of rockabilly and some soul and rock on the Royal Roost label that's worth good money. Stan gets though, I usually nab these up, especially on that label. 15, 20 bucks, I would gather. There's a jazz tone, Coleman Hawkins. Now, Coleman Hawkins and his All-Stars are very well known. This one always has a white label, all the ones I've ever seen. It's split a little bit on the top, it looks like the seams. This is still a 15 or so dollar record. Somewhere in that range, 15, 20 bucks. Now, if I get a whole bunch of these for a dollar, I'll usually dump them together in a lot. And they'll sell very quickly for around $4 a record. So you can 4X your investment real quick just by cranking them out cheaply. And then they can be resold by somebody else as well. Now, Gil Evans, again, this is an orchestrated jazz. Um, and this is on an Impulse label as well. Now, this is, I believe, after they ABC acquired it. But it's still an original gatefold. Excellent condition. I mean, look at that gloss. Just an excellent one here. All of this sort of thing I do extremely well with. Now here's something that shows up around here quite often. I've probably had a dozen of these. This is the Falcon Marching Band from Bowling Green State University. Now I've had probably eight or ten different years of these sorts of albums. People who were in the band or something like that usually buy these or, or people who went to the university to remember this from their time frame. You'll find them all over the place. I find them for Toledo University. Most of the colleges around here that have been around for, say, 60, 70, 100 years, there's probably an LP out, even for the ones around your area. I've got a few other ones in here. Now, Riverside. I picked a few just to show you some oddball things. Riverside is another one of those that does jazz. There's a black version of this label and this blue version. It's a long play, original, like a micro groove, I guess you could say. This is from the 50s. They're not worth a fortune, but it's just in such nice condition. I should still be able to get, say, 15 or 20 bucks out of it. Now, there's a hole drilled into the cover. So, again, this is similar to what you would see and what I talk about in Patreon. So, again, you should know what that means. It doesn't distract from the value, though. Now, here's one I've had once before, and the only reason I knew what this was. And this is from NORAD, North American Air Defense Command. And they had a band. It's a well-known band back in the day. This is probably from the 50s or early 60s. Custom pressed for them specifically. There was like a club membership. People would sign up to get these LPs. So you'll usually find them in like a GI's collection. It's an oddball one, but I have done fairly well with this sort of thing. People don't relate it to that. This can go in the military section as well. Now I've got some gospel. I just pulled out because I just talked about gospel in my Patreon group. Now this one is sealed. This is a local one that I do run into. Very, very plain. Let me show you the label. Spangle is a label that's local just from here. It was only done in Toledo area. There's some soul, there's some rockabilly on that label as well. Any one by that label I usually grab for a dollar or less, always. This one should do extremely well. It's in the cello, it's mint. Now again, for those in Patreon, I've talked literally about this exact same thing the imagery on here. So you should know what kind of music this is already. Um, excellent condition, private pressed. Again, these are really good. I will do very well on this record here. Now here's Zion. Now again, I talked about that as well. Early Zion. Now this is an Ohio label as well. I do extremely well on every one of these. This is a musical. It's M-U-S. It has a space, a capital I, and then a C-O-L. Let me see if we can show it to you. That's the label there. There are some records with this label, just odd ones without a cover that sell for hundreds of dollars on that label. This one should do very well as a Zion. 
Now again, this one I just talked about again in Patreon as well. This is a local group. Again, local does very well. These imagery on here should pretty much tell you what kind of music this is straight on out. So um, let's see, Reverend Masio Woods. Masio Woods is very well known. Sometimes you would just see Masio written on the record itself. This is a VJ International. Um, and VJ is the Beatles, and it's crooked on that side, so let me turn it. This is basically the exact same label you will find on Beatles records, like Meet the Beatles. Um, I don't know the price on this one, but I know it's worth getting. I should do extremely well on this one as well. Now, the Five Blind Boys of Alabama. Look them up. They're a very good gospel soul, deep gospel, deep soul. This is on Hob. Hob is a gospel mostly. Shirley Bassey and a few other ones have some records, but she does do gospel as well. But there's many on this label that aren't necessarily this sort of gospel. There's some decent soul on it as well, too. Um, some very well-known people are on this label. So this one should do fairly well. I have not had this one, so I'll have to look it up. Guesstimate on most of these, bottom line, I don't think I'll get less than 15 bucks minimum on any of the records that I purchased out of this. I may throw together another haul, or maybe I'll do one just for Patreon or something, but we do extremely well with the records. You list them, you know, you can list them in bulk, you can list them however you want. Even if you're not going to make, you know, a fortune or you don't want to list them individually, if you buy them at a dollar, most of the time if I put them in a lot, I can get three bucks to four bucks a piece back out of them as a lot. I'll put a couple decent records in there. An overall average on the lot will give me three, four, five bucks a piece out of them, depending on how I title it, my graphics, my, my imagery and such forth too. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas on records. There's a ton of money into them. You can make a lot of money. They're all over the place as long as you know which ones to get and you only buy in certain condition ranges. VG plus to NM minus. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.